Hello, hello. So I have a beautiful gift to show the universe today. An octogram. Oh, look how beautiful this one came out. So I showed another one in my other video. It had only seven twists. That was a mess up. This one came out perfect. And I lined them up just right. So I had to do very little solder work. It's a copper silver alloy solder with a copper braid. It's triple helix. Braid to get twisted eight times and then connected to itself. So there's actually only one pathway moving through this whole thing. Well, the hexagram is two pathways, two triangular pathways, one oct octagonal pathway. Um, and copper cannot be magnetized. Um, so this is my cyclical transformer. And uh, I want to explain a little bit more of how this works. I haven't really done anything with it. Um, there's going to be a lot more work to, to get this right and also getting the, um, the, the turns tighter in between them. Um, it's going to require a little bit of finagling. And so, luckily I can show the video on my screen without that screen break thing. Flicker. Okay. So we have an octogram. Well, let me, let me say something about the, the hexagram first. The hexagram is uh, if you go to the Vortex space and you look at my website, you will see the different layouts of charges on the um, geometries. And so a hexagram has, say on this point, there's a negative charge right here and negative charge right here. They're um, parallel with each other as they spin around this hexagram. So if there's two negative charges here, you have two positive charges here. So you have um, compression and expansion. And if you have two uh, compression points, you have an expansion point in the center. So in the center where the pathways meet, you have um, you have a nice circle, essentially. You have a hidden circle um, right here um, in the center of the intersection points of the hexagram. And then you also have two pathways on the outer points of the hexagram, which is what the vortex based mathematics matrices, the 6x6, six six, creates. It creates the external pathways, when there's also an internal pathway being created by another 18 strand uh, number, um, number string, which is HIN. Um, we've only been looking at one layer of the energy that's moving in these systems. There's actually more layers to the matrices. And so to know about the hexagram is because the double helix has this nice 180 degree symbiosis. Um, the, uh, it's almost like it works like a spring in terms of the energies flip-flopping. It's, it's how light moves. Electromagnetic waves move as a double helix normally. And they, uh, they balance, they, they feed off each other, going back and forth, back and forth. Um, and so you can create, say, superconductive energy with the double helix. And so if you have one compression point on this, you have another compression point, then understanding a transformer, the energies transform each other. They feed off each other. With this, it's a triple helix. It, the energy moves a lot differently. I'm going to explain that now. The double helix transformer effect is much simpler because also transformers usually work with only a primary and a secondary, two circuits. So the octogram works a lot differently. It's one circuit with three points of compression on one circuit. Three points of compression, three points of vacuum. And so uh, let's look at the blue line. The blue line... Um, there is one point on the outer. Can we use my pencil? There's one point. Oh, there's one point on the outer, and two points of intersection right there. So you can say these three are the compression points. On the opposing side, you'd have uh, one point uh, vacuum and uh, two points of vacuum at this intersection, and one point vacuum right there. Oh, actually, no, it's going straight across. So right there. Two points of uh, vacuum right there, and one point vacuum over here. So there's six points of focus. Three compression, three expansion. 
but there's two different states as it moves through this coil. So there's these three points, and then there's these three points in the green line. And so let's talk about ratios. Just so the ratio from this point, right here, the innermost point to the outer point, is 2.6131, extremely close to the golden ratio squared. However, let's, we're going to look at the ratios for the transformer effect. So the ratio from this point to these two points right here is, um, I believe, it's this one, J divided by R, yeah, is, uh, this is ratio 3, 2.414, and the green one right here, so this outer point, these two outer points with this inner point, that ratio is 1.414. And so, if you are aware of 1.414, it's the square root of 2. So, the one state is square root of 2 plus 1, and the other state is the square root of 2. It oscillates between these two states, the square root of 2. The ratio of those two states is uh, 1.7071 in test 1, um, which is the square root of 2 divided by 2 plus 1. Um, and so what's important about the square root of 2, it's the basis of a triangle. And if you look right here, you have your perfect triangle right here. Let's call that one unit. Call that one unit. That's the square root of 2. The octagram is made of eight right angles um, on the outside. You can see them. Um, what's also interesting is, look what happens visually. Now, really focus on this concept of how this actually works your brain differently by seeing the parallel lines like this and then seeing it like that. It's one of the most interesting visual tricks I've ever seen, just shifting the octogram 45 degrees and what it does to your brain. It's very interesting. Um, and so the notion with this is you have a changing ratio of the with the energy being transformed, of um, always having one charge on the outside and two on the inside, and two lining up in two different states. And so you're getting this alternating effect, transformer effect. And the notion is it causes an advanced form, I won't say advanced, a simple form of the organization of energetic forces. Now, um, to me, this is a cyclical transformer that can uh, constantly, uh, constantly um, polarize, pressurize, same t concepts, a, the air energetic flow. Because also, as one transforms the other, it's a closed loop transformer. And so as one accelerates the voltage of another, you're accelerating the voltage of the whole flow. And so it constantly steps up the voltage. It constantly polarizes the voltage until it cannot be pressurized anymore, until it's reached a maximum level of pressure. And so that is the uh, idea behind the transformer. Um, there's more concepts into it. Um, the way to get these to work is... Um, I'm going to start creating geometry systems. Um, I really need to get the same wire diameter. This wire is 1 8 inch thick, um, and this is uh, a fifth of an inch thick, or no, it's definitely bigger. I can't remember the thickness. This is definitely a smaller thickness. I know this is gauge 4, and I thought this is, this looks actually a quarter inch. So, quarter inch, this is about a fifth inch. Um, uh, gauge four uh, wire uh, and um, laying them in a system so uh, I couldn't get a flow of energy from the copper to the steel and so this is this is a concept that's important where you get your initial charge is a differential in materials and so I'll have to try this with copper and steel tomorrow I haven't done it with copper and steel I've done it with copper and aluminum copper and zinc 
And so if you take a copper rod and stick it into the ground of the earth, and you take an aluminum rod and stick it into the ground of the earth, and you hook up a voltmeter, you'll have a DC flow of energy from either from always the zinc or the aluminum into the copper, and the copper absorbs it. Now, the notion, I understand this, is the aluminum has three electrons on the outer shell, and zinc has two on the outer shell. Um, copper has one. So you're looking at pressure densities of the outer electron shell. And electrons are just the overlapping points of the magnetic field of the atom structure itself. You take away an electron, um, uh, essentially they can be recreated. Um, so you always create constant flow of energy. Um, and so that's a really complicated subject. I probably worded it wrong. I'm not even going to go there. But the notion is you can get a flow of perpetual energy from something that has a higher pressure density than to a lower pressure density. And, um, but you need, uh, you need something to create the work. The earth is a, is a giant scalar energy pump. It creates work. And so this also is a magnet creates work. Um, it's my magnetized one. Um, I also want to make one that's the geometry is perfect on it. Um, and magnetize it probably with a stronger magnetic field. Um, and, and essentially using one to create flow to the other. I really, I think I want to make, I'm going to make the rotating coil, I'll do a decagram. I'm thinking of making it out of aluminum. And the notion is to create a flow of energy from one into the other. And doing so, if you build them at the right ratio sizes to each other you can create standing waves of energy within them. And as they are also a closed circuit, you preserve the inertia. And so the same notion with the Tesla tower is as long as you have a little bit of a charge, you can take that little bit of a charge and feed it into something that will, that utilizes this electromagnetic standing wave that also preserves the inertia to build up very strong, powerful systems of re resonant energy. And so I'm close, really close. And uh, being it's the final week of the Mayan calendar, like, wow, this has been achieved. And it's beautiful. Uh, I love it. I really love it. Next stop, dodecagram, the rodent coil. Oh, yes. Ciao, everyone. Adios. Namaste.